I have been very surprised and grateful. We'll start with the good news first. In the amount of women who are returning to our ministry this year. So we have had a lot of bumps along the road in our short history of the Given Institute. We were founded in 2016, so only six years, but a pandemic hit in the middle of that. We transferred from a religious sister run event to now a lay run organization with, of course, sisters on the board, but ultimately a lay staff. And so a lot of internal changes and then a global uh, situation and health crisis. And so I have been pleasantly surprised at the number of women, primarily our mentors and donors, who have stuck with us and come back through all of these changes, leadership changes, um, difficulty in planning an in-person event when you have to socially distance and wear masks, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have been thrilled at the number of women that believe in our mission from the very beginning when it was first founded by those religious sisters and have stuck with us. And then I would say one of the difficult surprises then are maybe the women who think they want to be involved in the Given Institute. And then when they realize that we are faithful to the church's teachings and the magisterium, particularly in all aspects, but very clearly uh, in aspects on the teachings on human sexuality and ordination, and some women then do not want to participate in our mission when they find that out. And so that sometimes can be difficult. And then understanding pastorally, how do you embrace those women and have those difficult conversations and navigate them? Mm -hmm. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome. We are joined by Rachel Ullman. Rachel, it's lovely to have you with us. Uh, Rachel is the executive director of the Given Institute. Like she's been saying, it's a nonprofit organization dedicated to activating the gifts of young adult women for the Catholic Church and the world. So we're going to uh, meet Rachel, a little, hear a little more of her story, and unpack what that actually means to activate the gift. So good to have you with us, Rachel. Thanks for uh, Friends, having welcome. Me. Friends, welcome to Smart Catholics Mastermind. We're all about meeting the minds and hearts of Catholic creators. They devote their time and talent to mastering their vocation so that ordinary people like you and me can live fuller lives faster and maybe get a little smarter. So Rachel, what is your uh, your background, your story, and, and how did that set you up for, for starting Given? I love to tell a story from my childhood because I think that it then gives a picture of who I am now as the executive director of Given. So I am a cradle Catholic and my family not only was involved in our Catholic faith, but also was a part of an interdenominational Christian community, a charismatic Christian community. And so we would go to mass in the morning on Sundays and then go to prayer meeting in the afternoon. <laughs> so we were all full of Jesus all day on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the really cool story from my childhood is that all of the other lay uh, persons in the community seem to have an interest in Rachel as a child, okay? She she was different maybe than the other kids in the community and in the families. And one of the men in the community said, when Rachel grows up, she is either going to be a nun or a roller derby queen. <laughs> My parents loved that and would always joke about that, tell our family, right, repeat that over and over. And so then as I'm growing up, I'm reflecting on that thinking, now what does that mean for my future, for my destiny, right? How am I going mm -hmm. to use my life in the service of others? And I did not feel called to religious life as I was discerning my state in life. Uh, but mm -hmm. then where does that roller derby queen story come in, right? And I really have found through the blossoming of my personality and then ultimately my call to leadership is that I'm not afraid to get in there and be in the middle of the rink <laughs> and to um, even face tough scenarios and tough situations and have a thick skin, right? When it comes mm -hmm. to evangelization and preaching the gospel and being in uh, a leadership role in the service of the gospel. So I think I found my happy medium between nun and roller derby queen. And the cool part in my mission with the Given Institute is that I work with religious sisters regularly. And so I think there was okay. a bit of a prophecy in that. That's amazing. So what does the Given Institute do? What does it mean to 
help young women activate their gifts. We are a Catholic women's ministry that was founded by religious sisters in 2016. So the Given Institute hosts an annual leadership forum that we bring together young adult women ages 21 to 30 for a five-day event of leadership training, faith formation, and then ultimately dedicated mentoring. So the awesome part about the Given Forum is that it's not just a conference and then you go home and that's the end of your relationship with Given. All of the young women that are accepted into a leadership cohort are ultimately paired with a mentor, with an established woman leader who works with that young woman for an entire year after that in-person event at the forum. Wow. And so wow. our mission is to activate the gifts of women for the church and the world. And we do that through bringing all these women together at this formative event, but then ultimately through relationship, through this mentoring mm -hmm. program where mentors work with these young adults on spiritual, professional, and personal development. Amazing. Um, to get a sense of the context, what's going on such that they're not getting this anywhere else, or maybe these gifts are going on uh, unnurtured, perhaps? That's a really great question. I uh, want to share back when the sisters founded Given and this mission in 2016. It came at an opportunity and a surprise moment in history when the church was celebrating the year of consecrated life in 2015. And so a large mm -hmm. philanthropic organization approached a collaborative body of sisters called CMSWR, that's their acronym, and said, in this year of consecrated life, when Pope Francis wants to raise up the voices of consecrated men and women in the church, we want to mm -hmm. give you a large bulk of money, and we want you to dream big and start something new. And the sisters took this incredible opportunity and they prayed about it and discerned and looking at the landscape of the United States at the time, they did not see a ministry and apostolate specifically dedicated to young adult women in their mm -hmm. 20s. So in mm -hmm. this transitional decade that you and I have both been through, right? Seasoned adults have been through when you're discerning big questions, right? Big state mm -hmm. and life questions. The call to religious life, the call to marriage, the call to a professional career, right? And mm -hmm. to be able to do that in relationship with a dedicated mentor who is faithful to the church's teaching, steeped in prayer, is exactly what we all needed when we were in our 20s, right? And there are a lot of corporate leadership training opportunities, but they are secular in nature, mm -hmm. right? And so what Given mm -hmm. does and what we offer differently is that integration of faith and life, that integration mm -hmm. of your faith with your personal vocation. Wow. Are there any other ministries doing it the way that you're doing? I mean, the level of mentoring involved just sounds incredible and and just like a, to a level of intensity i've not heard with many other groups there probably are other mentoring programs and catholic mentoring programs out there but i must say that i do think what we offer specifically women mentoring younger women right is the only right. game in town but also our methodology to mentoring is very unique. And we have a partnership mm -hmm. with Dr. Joshua Miller, who is the uh, executive director of InScape Center for Personal Vocation. He's a professor out of Franciscan University. So he wrote the book, Unrepeatable. If you have never read that book, you got to order it that. and you have to okay. read it. <laughs> it's incredible. And ultimately his mentoring methodology, and he trains our mentors in this, is to help young women to discover the gift only they can give, to discover their personal vocation through their own stories that mm -hmm. God has at the moment of conception given us unique and unrepeatable identities, right? And that it is only specific to us, to me, Rachel, to you, Dominic, right? And we need to mm -hmm. discover that because it's knit within our very creation. It's not something that we then take a ton of courses so that we can learn it. It's natural to right. us. It's the gifts that God gave us from the very beginning. And so our mentors mm -hmm. help the young women to identify those God-given gifts and then use them at the service of others. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's beautiful. How, so what are the right kinds of 
young women then? Like you've you've identified an age range, but mm -hmm. um, who are the kinds of young women that really resonate with you, that really thrive uh, and go on to do well? We have an application process for women to become a part of one of our leadership cohorts. And ultimately what we're looking for is a young woman who is deeply rooted in her Catholic faith and has leadership capacity, right? So that doesn't mean yeah. that she has had to have held traditional leadership roles in the past, right? But through the mm -hmm. questions that we ask in the application, we can identify, does this woman want to be a leader? And what we call leadership is gift of self, <laughs> which is different Ooh. than what the secular world would say, right? Could, the, could you go there? Could you unpack yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. We believe that at our very core, how we will ultimately be happy and satisfied is by making a gift of ourselves to others. And that that is true leadership. That's the true modeling of behavior that we want the next generation to witness, right? Being a leader is being able to manage your personal vocation well <laughs> and model mm -hmm. that for others. That's what we see as leadership. And so women can do that in the home. They can do that in the convent. They can do that in the workplace. They can do that in any, any sphere of influence that they are planted in. And we want to make that very clear at Given is that we're not just raising up corporate CEOs, right? We're not just raising up the next diocesan leaders. We are doing that. Well, we are raising up every woman because every woman is called to leadership in her own sphere of influence, ultimately by making a gift of herself to others. That's beautiful. Um, I'm curious, how have the last two years um, not just impacted your work, but maybe opened up perhaps new uh, new direction, new options for, for women? Or is it largely remain the same because where you're operating runs deeper than kind of what happens in the culture. I absolutely think some new avenues or new relationships have been built over the past few years. Part of Givens history that I mentioned earlier is that we were uh, founded by religious sisters by that moment in time when that foundation offered that money to sisters. So the incorporation of lay women such as myself has been part of the new model of mentorship that we have been offering at Given. And we have seen such incredible fruit, not just for the young adults who receive the mentorship, but for the peer mentor group between lay and consecrated that has happened at Given. It has been so beautiful. We have virtual trainings leading up to the Given Forum in person where we bring together, we have uh, over 75 mentors this year in our program. So we bring these wow. women together in a cohort and they build a beautiful relationship and friendship and they receive from one another affirmation in how God has uniquely called them. Because suddenly the competition ends. <laughs> suddenly it becomes a complementarity of the various ways that God calls us to be holy and God calls us to use our gifts. And so I have just really seen some great healing that has happened in uh, women leaders through the very small uh, fact that we bring together both lay and consecrated women as mentors in our program. That's amazing. Well, for those who are watching, if if this sounds like you and you're interested, obviously I'm, I'll ask uh, Rachel to share where she can, uh, where people can get in touch with her in a moment, but please do hit that like button right now because it does help more people to hear about this message. It'll help YouTube serve up this video to more folk. Um, this show is brought to you by the free Catholic community on smartcatholics.com. We're free of trolls and ads and toxicity, faithful to the Holy Father, Pope Francis and the church, and we're committed to a culture of kindness and learning. If that sounds like you, come and check us out on smartcatholics.com. Rachel, in wrapping up, how can people get in touch with you, uh, learn more about your work and uh, maybe even apply? Great. Yes, you can go on our website, giveninstitute.com. And our application season always opens on November 1st. And so any adult woman, if you're interested as a young adult participant, please look for our applications. Or if you would like to serve as a mentor, we would love to have you. And this would be in uh, the future for the 2023 Given Forum. And so 
look for those applications, but there are many ways that you can get involved in our community. You can follow us on social media at Given Institute. We also have virtual leadership trainings that are open to women of all ages that take place year round in our Given Academy series. And we also have local Given gatherings where local women leaders in their own hometown, home diocese, get together for a one day event. And so please just go on our website to find out about all those opportunities. That's awesome. And you said you have an event as of this recording. You have an event coming up very soon, yes? Yes, we have the 2022 Given Forum that is being hosted in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, June 21st to 25th. But I invite all women, there's one event that any woman can attend, and that is the evening of Wednesday, June 22nd. You can come in person in Philadelphia, and there's tickets on our website. We also can watch for free online on our YouTube channel. And this event is called our Catholic Female Leaders Celebration. And what's taking place is we have our MC, Katie McGrady, who's going to speak on the feminine genius and the specific giftings of women. But ultimately, it's a time for you to hear from our given alumni. It's a showcase of our young adult women and the action plans that they have executed in the church and the world of giving their gifts to others. So you'll hear some wow. very amazing stories from our alumni. And then also we have some surprises for some uh, future semifinalists in the OSV challenge. We'll be announcing those women, their names, their action plans, and they will be receiving some grant monies from our given donors to accelerate their work in the church and the world. That's incredible. Oh gosh, I'd love to hear those stories personally. Amazing. Well, in, in wrapping up, my always my favorite part of each show, if you had one minute to share a message of encouragement to other Catholics everywhere, what would you want to say? This message is for all persons, but I'm sure women specifically will want to hear it. <laughs> we believe at Given that women are natural innovators. And I know here on this um, community of smart Catholics that you're hoping to aim to raise up the genius of men and the genius of women. And I just want to encourage all women that are listening to know that you all have been gifted by God. Every woman has a gift and every woman has the capacity for leadership. And ultimately because leadership is being a gift of self to others. And so to pray with that, to ask the Lord to reveal those gifts that he has given you and then not be afraid to use them. Go out and do something with your gifts because you can make a difference in even your small sphere of the world. You can make a difference simply by using the gifts that God has given you.